<coughs> so today in section 2.8 I'm going to talk about the derivative in general derivative of a function the derivative of a function unlike what I did in uh, in 2.7 we define the derivative particularly at a specific point as a slope of tangent line at the point so we were given a specific point here we're going to define the derivative in general at any point x okay that's how this is different so this is more general than we did in 2.7 the derivative of a function f the derivative of a function f at any x value it doesn't have to be a specific one at any x value is given by the function so now we're getting a function not a number like a slope is a number it's given by the function f prime of x equals the limit so you notice the x for any x as h goes to zero instead of a plus h it's x plus h minus f of x over h so we're replacing a with x because a was given x is any value in the domain okay as long as the derivative as long as the limit exists so this is still the slope of tangent line of course but not a specific one to the graph of f at any x so it could be you could be talking about slope right here or right there or right there or right there or right there so this will give you a formula that's why it's a function it gives you a formula for the derivative of finding the slope of the tangent line. If you want a specific one, you plug in the number and it will give you a specific one. Okay. So just to refresh your memory, if I'm given the graph of f, I want to show you an example that I have in my note, the graph of f below. And I'll redraw that. Uh, something like this. So this is the graph of f and I want to graph f prime its derivative so if I want to graph its derivative this is where I would start with so this is f prime x so okay where the function where the graph of the function has a minimum or a maximum the slope of the tangent line is zero that means the derivative is zero so at this point the graph is going to cross the x-axis at this point it's going to cross the x-axis and at this point it's going to cross the x-axis if the function is decreasing if the function is decreasing that means its derivative is negative so it's decreasing its derivative is negative the function is increasing between this point and this point so the derivative is positive between these two points and then increasing the derivative is positive and then it's decreasing so it's gotta go down no so let me do this my bad so you do the zeros the function is decreasing its derivative is negative up to this point the function is increasing between these two points the derivative is positive so it's going to peak somewhere and then it's going to be negative between these two points that means why is it negative because the function is decreasing on this interval and then it's gonna go back and 
it's gonna be since the function is increasing it's gonna go to positive after that point and that's what's gonna happen roughly speaking of course we don't know how far down or up these points will go okay so now let's look at uh, I have 2014 page 162 in the notes I want you to go over that I want to go over 24 from page 163 24 page 163 we're given f of x equals negative 5x squared plus 8x plus 4 and it says find the derivative of the function using the definition state the domain of the function and the domain of its derivative so derivative using the definition the limit as h goes to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x over h okay so it's the limit as h goes to 0 we're going to plug x plus h for x in there so negative 5 x plus h square plus 8 times x plus h plus 4 so we plugged in x plus h for x in that equation and then minus all this which is f of x negative 5x squared plus 8x plus 4. Now we have some work to do. So it's the limit as h goes to 0. We're going to FOIL that. So it's x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Then we're going to times it by negative 5. Distribute the 8. 8x plus 8h brings the 4 down. Distribute the negative plus 5x squared minus 8x minus 4 all over h so the 8x cancels out the 4 cancels out distribute the negative 5 so we get negative 5x square minus 10hx minus 5h square plus 8h plus 5x square bring these down that cancels out we have we can factor out an h because we want to cancel out the bo bottom h that's the whole point once we cancel this h out then we plug in a zero for h and that's going to be the derivative at any point or the slope of the tangent line at any point which is negative 10x and that's going to be zero plus eight so this is the slope at any point now if i want the slope of the tangent line at any value i just plug in the value domain of f of x is all real numbers domain of f prime of x is all real numbers okay uh here's another one this is not from the book f of x equals x to the three halves find its derivative using the definition okay using the definition which is f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x all over h which equals the limit as h goes to 0 we plug in x plus h we get x plus h to the 3 halves we plug in we x so it's x to the 3 halves over h again if we put a 0 for h we get x to the 3 halves minus x to the 3 halves which is 0 over 0 and we gotta work it out and to work this out we gotta it's it's like there's a square root cube and then square root cube so what we're gonna do it we're gonna times this by the conjugate and see if that works so the limit as h goes to zero i'm rewriting this we're gonna times it by x plus h to the three halves plus x to the three halves and same at the bottom x plus h to the three halves plus x to the three halves well now if we foil x plus h to the three halves times x plus h three halves we add the exponents three halves plus three halves is six halves which is cube we do outer and then inner they cancel each other out and then minus 
x to the 3 halves times x to the 3 halves is x cubed all over the bottom so now we can do this in two ways we can do the difference of two cubes or we can just work it out like like do x plus h x plus h x plus h or do the binomial theorem okay or do the binomial theorem so anyway however you do it you're gonna get x cubed plus 3h squared x plus 3h x squared plus h cubed and then bring this guy down minus x cubed all over that you can see some of these are not easy so now we can pull out an h from the top so we get 3 h x plus 3 x squared plus h squared all over this so now we do the limit as h goes to 0 to get the derivative at any point so if we put a 0 for h we get 3 x squared on top and then x to the 3 halves plus x to the 3 halves is 2 x to the 3 halves which is 3 over 2 x to the what's 2 minus 3 halves it's 1 half and when we do the, the, the power rule it's a lot easier to get this but now we don't know the power rule okay all right number 38 page 164 let's look at 38 page 164 it says so we need to be looking at the chart water temperature affects the growth rate of brook trout of brook trout the table shows the amount of weight gained by brook trout after 24 days in various water temperatures if w of x If W of X is the weight gain at temperature X, construct a table of estimate, estimated value for W prime and sketch its graph. What are the units for W prime of X? Okay. So basically, this is what we have. We have X. And that's your temperature. That's T in degrees Celsius. And we have... Uh, the weight gained in grams so this is degrees celsius and the weight so we're going to do w of x which is weight gained in grams we're given all this 15.5 37.2 17.7 31.0 20 20.0 19.8 and 24.4 negative 9.8 so it, it says if wx of x is the weight gained uh, by a trout after 24 days in various water temperatures if W of a temperature at temperature x, so x is the temperature, construct the estimated values for W prime. So how do we estimate W prime? To estimate W prime, well, to find W prime, we gotta go to the limit, but we can't. We don't have a function here. So to 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 find the rate of change for the first one, W prime for the first one. We have two data this is x1 w1 x2 w2 so we do the change in weight over the change in temperature okay so for that value we're going to do the change of weight 31 minus 37.2 over the change in temperature 17.7 minus 15.5 so if you do the math 31 minus 37.2 divided by the difference of 17.7 minus 15.5 in parentheses it's negative 2.82 if we do two decimal places 
negative two point. So we use the average for estimating the instantaneous because we have no other means. Now, for so we did these two. Now for these two, we could do these two together, or we could do these, right? We could use this an estimate or these two to get another value. In order to, to get a better estimate, we do the average. We take this from these two, we find that value and then do their average. So let's find that value. So, to, so that value would be 19.8 minus 31 over 20 minus 17.7. So 19.8 minus 31 and then divided by the change of 20 minus 17.7. So we got negative 4.8587 negative 4.87 now we take this and do the average with that and that's going to be your w prime that's the best estimate we can come up with so negative 2.82 plus negative or minus we don't do plus negative minus 4.87 and then divide this by 2 and that's negative 3.84 same thing for the next one. We do these two and we do the average with that one. I did the math, it's going to be negative 4.54. And again, for the last, for this one, it's negative 6.98, and this is negative 9.75. Okay? So check my math. Now, what are the units? We're doing what? We're doing grams over degrees Celsius, okay? So grams over degrees Celsius. All right, so now we have a question. I, okay. I don't wanna write all this down. It's a handout that you should all have on D12, okay? So given a function, when does f prime fail to exist? When do we say the function has no derivative, okay, or is not differentiable? Well, think about it. A derivative is a slope of a tangent line, okay? So if we cannot have a tangent line to the curve at a point, that means we cannot have a derivative. If we can have a tangent line, that means we can have a derivative, okay? If the function is discontinuous, if the function is discontinuous, like f of x equals 1 if x is greater or equal to 0 and negative 1 if x is less than 0. So if you draw the graph, obviously you're going to have a graph. At 0, there is no, you can't do anything. So you can't do a tangent line. So it's not differentiable at 0, okay? If it's discontinuous, that means it's differentiable. Discontinuous implies not differentiable so if there's no derivative that means no, if there is no continuity that means no derivative if if it has a corner point like f of x equals absolute value of x although it's continuous at zero but it doesn't have a derivative at zero why because if you're coming this way the slope of the tangent line is one if you're coming this way the slope of the tangent line is negative one so you have as you're approaching zero from the left, the derivative is negative one. From the right, it's one, so there is no specific value, so we say it's not differentiable. So if the function is not continuous, or if it's corner point, we still have no derivative. And the third case, when the graph of the function has a vertical tangent, that is, that's number three, that is if the limit as x goes to a absolute value of f prime of x is infinity. So so that means if you have a vertical tangent line, the slope in algebra, we say it's undefined. Here it's going to infinity. We say we have a vertical tangent. And once we have a vertical tangent, vertical tangent has undefined slope, meaning no derivative. Okay, and here's an example. F of x equals q root of x when we find this derivative it's going to be this and at zero you can see at zero is undefined and if you draw the graph 
you can see from the graph you can put it in your grapher you can see from the graph if you draw a tangent it's going to be the y-axis which is a vertical tangent line which has no derivative so the function will not have a derivative if it's discontinuous at the point it will not have a derivative if it's it's got a corner point that means it's continuous but not differentiable and it will not have a derivative if it has a vertical tangent line which means the limit of the absolute value of the derivative is going to infinity okay keep those in mind so for the function to be differentiable that means it has to be smooth okay no corner points no holes no jumps no corner points no holes no jumps all right 44 from page 164 if you look at 44 it says the graph is given state the reasons the numbers of which f is not differentiable so if you look at the graph in 44 right there the graph in 44 right there you can see at 2 there is a corner point at negative 2 there's a corner point so you have a derivative of 0 from the left because it's a horizontal line and then a positive derivative from the right so it's not differentiable there at 1 there's a, a it's discontinuous and uh, also at 3 there's a corner point Okay, so let me write this down. So at negative 2 and 3, there are corner points. And at 1, it's discontinuous. That's why the fu function will not be differentiable there. Now for higher order derivatives, So if y equals f of x, then y prime equals f prime of x. We also write it as dy by dx. We also write it as df by dx. There's so many different notations for derivative. The second derivative, which is the derivative of the first derivative. So you're finding the slope of the slope of the tangent line. Okay, the slope of the slope of the tangent line. It's the second derivative, two dots and it's d2y over dx squared which why is that because it's the derivative with respect to x of dy by dx so you can see there's d2 and there's dx times dx or dx squared same thing with this d2f over dx squared and so on the third derivative would be the third derivative which is d3y over dx cubed or d3f over dx cubed in general the nth derivative is fn of x which is dny over dxn which is dnf over dxn these are the notations so remember the velo velocity is the derivative of the position function or displacement function and the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity which is the second derivative of the position function so if you look at number 50 page 164 it it's asking you to there's the graph Okay, number 50, it's asking you to dis determine which graph is f, f prime, f double prime, and f double prime. Well, if you look at for f and f prime first, if, you know, when you do the derivative, like if you have x cubed and you find the derivative, you get x squared. If you have x squared, you find the derivative, you get x. It smoothens out the power. It decreases the power when you do derivative. 
So if you look at the mo the most complicated one, looks like b, which could be could be the function. And if it is the function, then its derivative, you can see at this point, we have a horizontal tangent line, so the derivative has to be c. Okay, it looks like that's the case. If b is f, then c is f prime. And then if you look at c, the derivative has to be zero there, which both of these here, a and b are. And but what's what's gonna make b its derivative is because you can see uh, for c and b that c is decreasing then b if you look at c is decreasing b is negative when c is increasing b is positive so that's how you know b is the derivative of c which makes it the second derivative and a must be the third derivative so let me write it down so d is f c is f prime b is the second derivative and a is the third derivative Okay. All right. I want to do one more. Fifty eight on page one sixty five. Fifty-eight from page one sixty-five. So we're given g of x equals x to the two thirds. Show that g prime of zero does not exist. G prime of zero does not exist. Well, to, let, we gotta see if we can find it, and if it if we can, we'll, we have to see that it doesn't exist. Okay. So the limit as h goes to zero g of 0 plus h minus g of 0 over h by definition okay the limit as h goes to 0 g of h is h to the 2 third g of 0 is 0 and that's the limit as h goes to 0 that's uh, h to the negative 1 third which is 1 over h to the 1 third which is 1 over 0 which is infinity so since the limit does not exist the derivative so g prime as zero does not exist okay part b show that uh, f prime no sorry part b if a is not zero find g prime of a so they want the derivative at any a so part b if a is not zero why because we just saw that it's not differentiable at zero find g prime at a so we're going to use the definition again limit as h goes to zero a plus h to the two-thirds minus a to the two-thirds over h so when we had three halves we multiply by the conjugate it worked but here if we do the conjugate it's not going to work because we will uh, it it will have four-thirds when we do three halves and three halves we got cube four thirds it's still not gonna work okay when we got cube we could work it out so what we're gonna do we're gonna times it by a plus h to the two thirds minus a to the two thirds we're gonna times it over h we're gonna times it so we're gonna do the difference of cubes so we're gonna so this is like a minus b if you remember the difference of two cubes it's a minus b then we times it by a squared plus a b plus b squared and that's gonna give me a cube minus b cube and that's what I'm aiming for so if this is a and this is b so we're gonna times it by a squared which is a plus h to the four thirds plus a b which is a to the two thirds a plus h to the two-thirds plus again b squared which is a to the four-thirds top and bottom okay over a plus h to the four-thirds plus a to the two-thirds a plus h to 
to the two thirds plus a to the four thirds. So this is the limit as h goes to zero. The this times that it's going to give you a plus h square minus a. Again, it would be a this cube which is that square and this cube which is that square. And look how nice it is right now a to the two-thirds, a plus h to the two-thirds, plus a to the four-thirds. If you work it out, you're going to get a squared plus 2ah minus a squ plus h squared, so you get 2ah plus h squared, and then the a squared cancels out, and then you factor out the h, so it'd be 2a plus h, and then you cancel out the h's, so you get so I'm, I'm just skipping some step. h goes to 0 of 2a plus h all over this. Okay, all over this. Now when h is 0, so you get g prime of a, it comes out to be 2a over 3a to the 4 thirds, which is 2 over a to the 1 third. All this work, okay? Or C show that y equals two x to the two thirds has a vertical tangent line at zero. So if you put in a zero, you can see the limit as a, the limit as a goes to zero as h goes to zero. You're gonna get two over zero, so it's undefined. Okay, which means we have, so g prime of zero goes to infinity. So that means we have a vertical tangent line at zero zero okay and then you can graph part d you can see that it has a vertical tangent line at zero zero and that's it